Um, all right, so uh, you might not have heard, but it's in the, everywhere in the news, J Julian Assange, uh, who has been under, uh, in British jail for, I think, now five years, uh, for quite a while, was released yesterday. He got, I guess, on a private jet, flew to Thailand, and from Thailand is flying to uh, a, uh, a United States Commonwealth, a, uh, one of these uh, islands like Puerto Rico that the United States has jurisdiction over. Uh, and uh, there he will, uh, uh, he will plead uh, guilty to one charge of the, uh, what is it, the whatever, uh, na some, some national security violation, secrets violation, or whatever. And um, he will be tried for, basically he would be sentenced, not tried, he will be sentenced for the same number of uh, months that he has already spent in British jail, released, and he will probably go back to his home, uh, his original home, which is in Australia. This, is, uh, this has been a 14-year uh, kind of, uh, what would you call it, uh, challenge for uh, Julian Lassange, who, uh, who has been uh, trying to evade, uh, coming to the, trying to not come to the United States over this period. Uh, to be tried on uh, security violations, uh, not, not security violations, uh, you know, uh, uh, disclosing uh, secrets, uh, uh, state secrets in the United States. So uh, he has been avoiding that. Uh, he's been fighting extradition. The United States uh, asked that the British extradite him uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the US. Okay, so let's do a little bit of history of Julian Assange, and I'll give you my evaluation of him. And then we can compare that to, uh, to Snowden, who is the other very famous uh, whistleblower, if you will, or revealer of real secrets. Uh, so we'll start, I mean, he was, he was born, I think, in 1971 uh, in uh, Australia. Uh, when he was growing up, uh, he, uh, he became uh, a, a very accomplished hacker, was considered maybe by 1991, when he was 20 years old, maybe Australia's most accomplished hacker. He's obviously quite brilliant, and uh, he, has, he has claimed, although there's no evidence of this, he claimed that he actually hacked, um, uh, actually, uh, hacked the uh, operations of uh, you know, the US, including NASA and Milnet, so uh, uh, top secret uh, security channels of the United States. In, back in those days. Again, there's no evidence. If there was, I think he would have been tried back then, but there's no evidence he actually did that. In 1994, he was charged in Australia with 31 counts of crimes related to hacking. He eventually struck a plea deal. There seems to be a pattern here. Struck a plea deal, he pleaded guilty and was given a fine of uh, 2,100 Australian dollars. He later described the, tri tri the trial as a formative period and as an experience that led him to start WikiLeaks. 10 years later. So in uh, 2006, uh, Assange published an essay describing WikiLeaks strategy and purpose. WikiLeaks is the company he started. Uh, the group would use leaks to force organizations to reduce levels of abuse and dishonesty, as decided by, as decided by uh, Assange. Uh, and uh, the idea was to reveal widespread corruption and, uh, and uh, falsehoods and uh, secrets that government was keeping unjustly from its citizens. But, and I'll get to this in a minute, it was not limited to governments. Uh, Assad used his hacking skills and the WikiLeaks program uh, to break into corporate, uh, corporate databases, steal corporate information, corporate secrets, and publish them. Uh, Assad is not a believer in private property. He is not a believer in uh, privacy. He has no respect for individuals, for private property, for privacy, or, uh, or anything like that. Uh, in 2010, WikiLeaks uh, made big headlines because it released a video that alleges a US war crime in Baghdad in July of 2007. Uh, in 2010, they released also over 250,000 US diplomatic cables an incident that later became known as Cablegate, alleged, uh, allegedly uh, Assange, uh, was the one who helped to decipher the data. Now, uh, let me just, 
I want to just cross-reference this. Um, so, uh, you know, these, um, uh, so in, in 2009, uh, an Army intelligence analyst, pretty junior person, uh, but an analyst in, in U.S. Army intelligence, basically, uh, Chelsea Manning, you, you know, he later was trans and you made a lot of headlines because of that, but Chelsea Manning basically downloaded a large ba batch of documents just documents, classified documents from a classified computer network, and basically uploaded them to WikiLeaks. Uh, the U.S. helicopter strike in Baghdad is, is one of the uh, documents that were released, um, but it also included the 250,000 diplomatic cables from American embassies around the world, and hundreds of dossiers compiling intelligence allegations against Guantanamo detainees. Uh, in 2010, WikiLeaks starts publishing all this material. Now, uh, it was clear that uh, this material explicitly identified, explicitly identified, uh, you know, uh, uh, informants uh, on the Taliban in Afghanistan that uh, this was going to, that uh, releasing this was going to, uh, you know, risk the lives of people who were working for the United States within the Taliban regime. And indeed, there is tons of evidence that many of the people whose names were disclosed by the WikiLeaks leak uh, were later killed, went missing, disappeared, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, that this had major impact on uh, the lives of many individuals. Uh, Assange knew this. Uh, he was told in advance that by releasing this, uh, their lives would be placed in danger. His, um, uh, his uh, actual response to that, at least documented by other journalists who uh, were involved in this, was too bad for them. They are, in a sense, double agents. They are, they are uh, you know, uh, people uh, who are working with the United States. They deserve whatever happens to them. Uh, Assange's motivation around much of this is the fact, is his anti-Americanism. Uh, I broaden that to his anti-West. Assange hates America. He is, he, he has a real nihilistic, uh, nihilistic, uh, you know, attitude. Uh, he wants to see America and the West put down. Uh, he is, uh, he, he uh, you know, he, he'll release anything. Whether it puts people in danger, doesn't put people in danger. He doesn't care. He doesn't care, right? Uh, all he cares about is doing damage to America and its businesses. Again, releasing information from private corporations uh, to embarrass them or to reveal their trade secrets or whatever. He doesn't care. It, none of that matters to him as long as he's doing damage to the so-called establishment. And the establishment he hates most is, uh, is the American establishment. Assange, without any doubt, is a criminal. Uh, and, and, and again, with a, with a strong nihilistic and, a, and a, a, without any doubt, an anti-American uh, bent. And, and again, Scott will defend him because that is the pose of the new right. They love this guy because, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, uh, he leaked, uh, he leaked uh, the, uh, some of the Clinton uh, emails. He's the one who the, basically the Russians handed the emails to him and he leaked them. Um, but he is, uh, he is a nihilist and he fits right well with the nihilistic right. Uh, today, he, uh, he is, uh, you know, the left and the right, he's, he's clearly a leftist, but the left and the right, there's very little to differentiate with, uh, between the two. He is super, super positive and friendly with Putin and Russia. Uh, nothing WikiLeaks ever published was an embarrassment to the Russians. Uh, there was clear attempt not to do that and not to release data that would embarrass the Russians. Uh, his whole goal was to embarrass the Americans. And one of the things that you will see with Tucker and Candace and Scott's uh, here in the chat defense of Assange is that they fundamentally, uh, you know, uh, are anti-American. 
and that the anti-Americanism is reflected in the fact that, you know, America is lousy because over the last, what is it, for 16 years, the left has dominated America. You know, there have been two Democratic presidents, and therefore it's okay. It's okay to go after everybody. Um, the very idea that somebody can download randomly a 250,000 documents from a secure server, a secure military server, and that it would be okay to publish this, and that that is not clearly a violation of American law and he shouldn't be tried for that. We're not talking about a whistleblower. We're not talking about somebody who's revealing, uh, you know, uh, something in particular that's wrong and rights violating. We're basically talking about somebody who is disclosing American secrets for the sole purpose, the sole purpose of disclosing American secrets. There was no filtering of this. I mean, there was no filtering of what would be harmful or what was not. Everything was published. People died as a consequence. And Assange is a bad guy, a monster. In a previous era, he would have been tried for treason and sent to jail for the rest of his life. This is not about corruption, and it's not about corruption. And even if it is about corruption, by what right does he hack into private computers? By what right does he disclose private information? Now, in 2010, with this release, after the release of this information, um, there are significant debates within uh, the Justice Department about asking for his extradition to the United States to face trial. Um, you know, uh, Manning was arrested and tried and sentenced to jail, ultimately pardoned because he was trans and not treated well in jail and all the ridiculous altruistic reasons by which somebody like that would be, would be, uh, um, uh, would be uh, pardoned. But in the meantime, Sweden in uh, 2010 issued an arrest warrant for Assange in connection with an assault, uh, sexual assault investigation. Uh, and uh, the, uh, now the rumor is, Scott will probably jump in here to assert this, that Swedish, Sweden only did this because the United States kind of forced a hand. This was a way for the United States to get back at Assange without actually dealing with him. Um, anyway, uh, Assange fights this in the British court because he's in London, and he loses his appeal. That is, there's a warrant for his arrest in Sweden. He's violated bail. And uh, the British are committed, because they're part of the EU at this point, to hand him over to the Swedish authorities. I mean, this guy is a piece of work. So what does he do? He goes to Ecuadorian embassy, who does not have an extradition agreement with Sweden, and he basically asks for political asylum. He claims he's politically persecuted by the United States, and the Swedish thing is just part of that persecution. Uh, he spent seven years, seven years, holed up in, um, in Ecuador, right? Spent seven years holed up in Ecuador, uh, in Ecuadorian embassy, not in Ecuador, in the embassy in London uh, as an Ecuador. Uh, as I said, Manning, uh, Manning was, uh, was uh, convicted after court martial, uh, sentenced to 35 years in prison, 35 years, the longest sentence in American history for a leak-related case. This was not a trivial case. This was not just some, uh, you know, unimportant documents. These are documents that actually put people's lives in at risk. These are documents that actually killed people. So Manny got 35 in prison. Uh, he then declared himself a transgender, adopted the name of Chelsea, went through the whole ridiculous thing, and uh, tried to commit suicide twice, and was pardoned by Obama. Uh, but, I mean, the real crook here, without any question, is Assange. In 2016, WikiLeaks published hacked emails from the Democratic, uh, Democratic uh, server, um, it's not clear how they got them. It's still, you know, it's a, a you know, uh, it, it probably came from 
s somebody uh, somebody hacking um, uh, the server, which was not particularly secure. We know that Hillary was not particularly uh, big on security. Um, anyway, uh, by every measure uh, and by every action that he took, Assange was a was a crook, right? Uh, or not a crook, but a crook in a sense of, of treasonous, uh, was, was uh, uh, eager to do as much harm as he could for the United States of America. Uh, in 2018, the Justice Department under Trump, Trump's Justice Department, obtained a grand jury indictment against Assange on the narrow charge of hacking, uh, relate, uh, of a hacking-related conspiracy um, and, and trying to help uh, Manning. Uh, the indictment is still sealed, um, and uh, anyway, he was charged, and uh, proceedings against him are started. In 2019, Swedish prosecutors dropped their investigation into Mr. Assange, uh, and, and Ecuador, he gets into a fight with Ecuador somehow, not sure exactly what happened. Uh, he's, um, uh, and his, uh, you know, Ecuador revokes his asylum status, and literally invites the British police to enter the embassy and arrest him for violating his bail. He's sentenced to 50 weeks in jail for that offense. The United States then formally charges him and starts extradition, the extradition uh, process. Um, and uh, he's not charged for publishing the hacked Democratic emails or even CIA documents from 2017. It, again, he's hacked for the previous ones, right? Uh, and of course, all this ended. There have been people on the right and on the left, the same kind of people, the Tucker Carlson people, uh, and on the left that have been uh, eagerly uh, encouraging the Biden administration to, uh, uh, to pardon him. Uh, the, Biden basically cut this deal with him, and the deal basically is to appease Biden's left. Uh, he, again, is going to plead for one count of violating the Espionage Act and be sentenced to five years in jail, which is the five years he's already spent in, uh, in prison. Just a few other things that I, that I found uh, interesting that you, you know, uh, as I said, put hundreds of Afghans at risk for fighting, against, for, for fighting against the Taliban, named names. I mean, he should rot in hell forever just for doing that. Uh, you know, he helped, um, uh, he released uh, uh, a list of organizers, instigators uh, of the opposition in Belarus and uh, provided them to the Russians and uh, Belarusian dictator, uh, to the Belarusian dictator, which again allowed him, uh, allowed him to round them up. Uh, so again, this is, uh, th these are people, these are real consequences to people's lives. This guy's a monster, right? Um, you know, he, he, he literally handed over the names of organizers to a dictator, Lukashenko in Belarus. And you know what happens to these people. They, they disappear, bad stuff happens. In 2012, uh, he got a show on, um, on Russia Today. Russia Today. And on that show, you can go find, uh, find I think there's the YouTube, uh, I think there's YouTube there. Right um, on the show, um, uh, I lost the, I lost the reference. Yeah, on the show he interviewed people like, not surprisingly, Noam Chomsky, who I think he's, I think philosophically he's probably more of a Noam Chomsky guy than anything else. Uh, uh, you know, uh, he, he in, 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 including uh, the head of the Hezbollah, uh, Hassan Nasrallah. So th again, this is a guy who's associated himself one way or another, with bad people, with evil people. Uh, let's see, what else? There was something about Saudi Arabia that was really interesting. You know, he tried to ingratiate himself with Trump, but it is the Trump Justice Department that ultimately went after him. Yeah, in 2016, WikiLeaks um, dumped a cache of files on Saudi Arabia. Right, they released these files of Saudi Arabia. Again, corruption, really? These files included 
Uh, Saudi men that have been arrested for, uh, for being homosexuals. That's corruption somehow. Uh, names of several Saudi citizens that had HIV. Corruption. And interestingly enough, think about the context of Saudi Arabia, the virginity status of many Saudi women. So my guess is that this was taken out of some medical, uh, medical thing. Um, and uh, again, you can do your research, uh, but there are a number of stories about this uh, data dump, uh, for, you know, Associated Press and others, uh, you know, uh, uh, disclosed this of this data dump of uh, Saudi info on Saudis. And again, what, what, what does Saudi Arabia do with homosexuals? What does Saudi Arabia do with adulteresses? What does Saudi Arabia do with these people? So this is a guy who doesn't care about human life, doesn't care about privacy, doesn't care about um, property rights, individual rights, uh, heavily involved in the Catalonia independence movement. But again, uh, it, not, not because he believes in anything, but this is really just somebody who wants to create havoc in the West, wants to create havoc uh, uh, among Western countries. Uh, he, he is probably, uh, he is a huge admirer of Putin and uh, of the Belarusian, uh, Lukashenko. He is a huge admirer of authoritarians and uh, a bad guy, a bad guy. And, you know, you can, you can, you know, put aside his work with the Kremlin and you can say that's all a conspiracy, maybe, but all these other things, I don't think he's ever denied them. I think these are all factual. So my evaluation of Assange, bad, bad guy with a nihilistic streak, a real hater of, Western, of the West, particularly of America, of Western civilization uh, more broadly. Uh, this, is a, this is a guy that should have spent a lot more time in jail. Uh, Biden uh, basically cutting a hero, uh, Biden basically cutting a deal with him. Uh, is basically Biden buying off his far left. And isn't it amazing that the people in the chat here who are associated with the right, with the new American right, like the far left are supporters of Assange. That is, again, the far left and the far right are the same. There's no difference between them. No difference between them. And, um, and, and yet... People who claim to be objectivists, claim to be objectivists, are supporting a far right movement that has more, you know, more in common with the far left than anything we stand for. It's, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. But anyway, I, so my evaluation of Assange, this is not a whistleblower. This is not somebody out for corruption. This is out to just embarrass and destroy and humiliate and kill, lead to the killing of whomever, whomever, particularly if they're associated or some way associated with the, uh, the West and with, uh, with America. So what about Snowden? Now, I think Snowden is a very different character. I mean, I, 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 Snowden, I think, was a hero uh, for coming out and saying what he did. I, I've lost some respect for Snowden over the years because he keeps coming out uh, with horrible statements and, and stupid statements. Uh, you know, he has, a, he has a very, very shallow understanding of free speech. Uh, he's on the wrong side of the Israeli-Palestinian Hamas. He's pro-Hamas. Uh, Snowden, I I politically, intellectually, philosophically, not a good guy, I'd say, over the last five years. But Snowden in, uh, in um, where was it, 2013, right? Snowden in 2013 revealed information about NSA uh, actually spying on Americans. NSA doing things that he believed were clear violations of individual rights, and I think rightly so. They were violations of individual rights. Snowden uh, had uh, a bunch of super secret files which he insisted on redacting all names 
anything that could put agents at risk, anything that could put individuals at risk, he took out. This is exact opposite of Assange, who published everything, didn't care. To compare Assange to Snowden is, I think, a massive injustice. Assange doesn't care about rights, doesn't care about individual rights, doesn't care about American privacy, doesn't care about America. He hates America. And led, Assange led to the death of people. Snowden worked hard so that his revelations would not lead to that death. He, um, he is a, um, he, he really focused his disclosures on those things, not on stopping the U.S. from listening to terrorists overseas, not the U.S. stopping terrorism against America. His whole focus was on rights of Americans being violated. And I have every reason to believe that Snowden was right. And that a lot of these programs still continue. That is that the NSA and other American security organizations are indeed violating the rights of Americans. And the fact that he brought it to the forefront, made a big deal out of it, one of the sad things over the last 10, 11 years is nobody cares, right? Not that Obama administration, not the Biden administration, not the Trump administration cared. Nobody's done anything about this. But the reality is that Snowden did something good. And in that sense, it's heroic. Assange did nothing good, nothing good. Oh, revealing Hillary Clinton's emails, right? Because it's against the left, he's a hero. I, 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 I'm curious if Edward or anybody out there List the heroic things that Assange did. What was, he, what was Assange fighting for? What is his positive agenda? He is a man of the left who hates America. He is a Noam Chomsky acolyte who loves Putin, loves authoritarianism, and is a leftist. You guys are supposed to be anti-leftists. And Biden did this to secure his left. Trump never did it. Biden did it. So, I, I, God, I don't understand the minds of these new white uh, nutcases. It, it really is, it, it's, it's weird. Um, Snowden, of course, um, uh, fled to Hong Kong, where he released, uh, released the information uh, to Glenn Greenwald, Laura Potras, and Barton Gelman, Edwin uh, McCaskill, for a variety of different, uh, for, this is from The Guardian and The Washington Post. Uh, you know, one of the sad things is that he made Glenn Greenwald bigger, and, and I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, a lot of the people in the chat are big fans of Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald is an anti-American, anti-capitalist, leftist, uh, you know, monstrous figure. Uh, is a really horrible guy. Uh, not criminal, but just really horrible. And yet, the new right loves him because he hates. Uh, he's come out against some of the woke left. Um, but uh, uh, he, he rele this information was released by these entities. He, uh, the the, the uh, you know, American intelligence agencies were after him. They knew he was in Hong Kong, so he escaped from Hong Kong and found refuge in Moscow. And initially I said, you know, okay, Moscow, because Russia doesn't have an extradition treaty with the United States, he can be safe there. Uh, but since then, you know, he really has... Um, He's been given uh, Russian citizenship by, by uh, Putin, and he really has uh, expressed views that are, you know, quite disgusting and quite offensive, and which is unfortunate because I had a, a positive view of him, um, and I, I don't anymore. I still think the act, what he did was good. As, you, as some of you know, because I've said this in the past, that a few months after he disclosed this material in either late 2013 or early 2014, I was with another dozen or so people invited to the NSA where they tried to explain themselves and justify themselves and so on, which only convinced me even more that what uh, Snowden had done was the right thing and, uh, and only convinced me more that the NSA indeed was in violation of, uh, of the individual rights of Americans in even more ways than Snowden suggested. Uh, but 
you know, it's it is uh, it is quite sad. Um, what you know, kind of what happened to Snowden. Uh, it would have been great if uh, if Trump would have pardoned him and brought him back to the United States. Uh, a lot of us were advocating for that, or somebody would have pardoned him. Uh, I think the more time he spends in Russia, the 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 worse he gets, and indeed, his uh, support for Hamas is pretty is pretty shocking. It's pretty shocking. Um, what's the principle here? I, I really don't think I don't think that uh, Snowden uh, was motivated by nihilistic motives. I think Snowden was motivated, at least in the beginning, by his love for America and by the love for certain principles in America. I don't know how much he understood the fourth principles, um, but uh, for the for the principles of America. So Snowden, I think, was a, a good guy and was motivated by the right things. I think Assange, every indication is uh, that he is motivated by hatred of America, hatred of the West, a Chomsky-like disgust with American foreign policy and America more generally, not a healthy critique of American foreign policy, but a Chomsky-like critique of foreign policy. Um, and um, uh, I think he is a bad guy. And uh, I, I, I wish he had been extradited to the United States. And it would be really, really cool if, uh, if he sat in jail for a very long period of time. If Manning could get 35 years, uh, you know, Assad should have gotten more than the five years he's going to get in this plea deal. On the other hand, it takes it off the table. And uh, it's good for Biden because Biden gets to tell his the left within his party, look what I did. I, I released Assange. They're very happy. If you're watching, if you're an ex, you know that, um, you know, that, uh, you know, people are ecstatically happy about this outcome. And this is... Uh, Biden has bought a lot of goodwill from uh, his left by doing this. But what's interesting is that the right supports this as well. I mean, the far right, not, not, the, center, not the right of center, the far right, the, the populist right. Call it the populist right. Um, I mean, look, there, there's a lot about Assange that we don't know. There's a lot about Assange that's very shady. I suspect that Assange was much more integrated into the Russian equivalent of the KGB than has been led on. But anytime you mention that, you're accused of conspiracy theories. So I don't, because I don't have any proof. I'm just suspecting it. I just suspect it. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the reality of his publishing 250,000 pages, the reality of people actually, people's uh, lives being harmed and damaged by that, people being executed for that. Uh, the fact that he published the Saudi documents, that's not, that's not questioned. Uh, the fact that he published uh, secret documents from private American corporations and had no problem with that because, again, he's a Chomskyite, and as a Chomskyite, he does not believe really in any significant way in private property. Um, it all makes him. It all makes him clear that he is a bad guy. He is a bad guy. We could quibble about the details. We can quibble about what was in any particular document. We could quibble about the Hillary Clinton emails, whether he got them from the Russians, or he got them from Podesta, or he got them from somewhere else, or, 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 or you know, it was a direct hack, or who who was manipulating whom. But the reality is that whatever at the fringes he is, he this is an immoral, evil bastard. Uh, and uh, I'm glad he sat in jail. I'm glad his last, last 14 years of his life have been destroyed. And uh, I hope he lives a, a, a pathetic, miserable life for the rest of his life. That is. And, you know, and, and, and I think Snowden is not ha living a happy life. And I think, uh, you know, his, his new ideas and his new vision, this is what happens when you go to Moscow and seek political asylum.